by four, we added two more special kinds of segments, right? So we've got mid segment, we've got median, we've got uh, angle bisector, per perpendicular bisector, and altitude. So this covered median and altitude. Remember that there's a point of concurrency for all of them except for mid segment, right? And we've got to know the vocab on the term where they meet. So which of those types of segments have a centroid? This is the median, right? And with the median, we said that the point of concurrency or where they meet, that centroid, is two-thirds the distance from the vertex and one-third the distance from the side. So if I look at these, this one says BG, which is on this segment, it, and BF is what we're given. BG is 9, so BF would be what? 12, 12 right? Because this is two-thirds the length. I'd have to add another one-third. Yes? Yeah. Okay. That's 12. Then BD is here. It says find AD. So those are the sides. If it's a median, what's true about those side lengths? They're equal. They're equal because it hits it at its midpoint. So if that's 12, then this is 12. And then the last one says CD. So now we're talking about, let me erase the rest of the stuff off. Now we're given CD, which is the whole, uh, the whole median, okay? And it wants GC, which is the two thirds part of it, right? So 27 times two thirds. Good, 27. Easy. Yep. BG is two-thirds, yep. Oh, I'm thinking, yes, this is 4.5. This is not, this is, that is correct, yep. Okay, that's two-thirds of it, right? So one half of that is the other one-third, thank you, Matthew. Questions on any of the other ones? So you have to, again, be able to recall that centroid meets median and medians is the two-thirds rule. Because obviously these are all going to get looped together on your test. All right, four says find the centroid of triangle ABC. So the centroid means it's got three medians. The medians mean that they're hitting each opposite side at its midpoint, right? So I've got to find the midpoint of each of these sides. So if I were to say that this is negative one, negative two, this is negative three, one. This is one, one, two, three, four, five. This is one, five. So if I wanted to find the midpoint, I would do negative 3 plus 1 over 2, and then 1 plus 5 over 2. And that's the midpoint there. And then I want to find the midpoint of this side. So that's 3, negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, negative 3. Again, add them, negative 3 plus 5 over 2, 1 plus negative 3 over 2, 2 over 2, negative 2 over 2, 1, negative 1. So 1. And the last one, I want the midpoint of this side, so I'm using 1, 5 divided by 2, and 5, negative 3. So 3, 1. So then carefully, and you can do this easier than me because on your notability, it's a little bit more accurate. But carefully, you just want to connect those points. So I want to go from vertex to opposite side, vertex to opposite side, and vertex to opposite side. Good. Where they meet is that one, one. So sometimes they will appear to be more obvious than others, I would say. You want to make sure that you're finding that midpoint because an eyeball of a midpoint could lead to something that's totally wrong. So you just want to be really careful. If it's, on, you know, if it's like vertical or horizontal, you could just count it. But if it's slanted like that, I mean, we could have probably eyeballed it, but not necessarily all the time will be that easy. Number five says, which type of triangle has an ortho center on the triangle? What answer is that? Good. So ortho center means altitudes, right? And altitudes is just like perpendicular bisectors, the in on out, the on would be the right triangle. More specifically, where is it on a right triangle? Good. At the right angle. So it would be here, here, here. It would be at the right angle. 
Whereas the perpendicular bisectors are where? On, like, on the hypotenuse. Good. So if it was perpendicular bisectors, it's the midpoint of the hypotenuse, right? It'd be yeah. there. Because it would be here, here, and here. Yep. What's that called? That is your um, circumference. Good. Louis, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions on the warm up? Okay, so 34 said D is the centroid of triangle ABC. Use the given information to find the value of X. So if GD, which is this segment here, is 2x minus 8 and gc this whole thing is 3x plus 9 then the relationship between them is that gd would be one third the whole thing right gc so 2x minus 8 would be one third 3x plus 3 and then you've got two choices. You could either multiply both sides by 3 and get rid of the 1 third. And I would say probably do that if these numbers are not divisible by 3. But because these are divisible by 3, you could do the other thing here, which would be to distribute the 1 third. So I'd get 2x minus 8 equals 1 third of 3x, which is x, and 1 third of 3, which is 1. Oh, I flipped it. I did 2x times 1 third. Oh, okay, okay. So it would have been 3 times this equals that, not the other way around. Okay. So x would equal 10. I'm going to equal 9, sorry. Okay, and your, which one was this? Okay, um, it asked you to find the ortho center, right? So a large scalene triangle. Let me try to get it. As neat as I could get it. Obtuse, right? Is that what it said? Obtuse scalene. So let's say like that. All right, so the good news is uh, if you're asked to do this like on a quiz or a test, it will ask you, it would give it to you with a graph. So you would be able to find, because basically what I need to know is I need for these, I need to figure out what's going to be perpendicular to each side. Okay, that's close. We're going to get it. I need to figure out how, what, what would be perpendicular to each side. So because this bottom side, if I, draw, if I drew a line that went down here, 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 None of those are going to be perpendicular inside the triangle, which is why you would extend that side outside the triangle. So the rule on obtuse angle or obtuse triangles is that you would extend the sides that connect to make that obtuse angle. Those are the ones you're going to extend. So it would be something like that. And then when you went to draw in your altitude, it would have to come from the vertex and it would have to be perpendicular to that certain point so with a um, graphing piece of paper you would find the slope of this side and then i would count down from here the opposite reciprocal of that so let's say this was like two thirds then i would count from here down negative three halves until i hit a point that's either on that line or past that line and then i would connect those points and then I would do the same thing for this side. I would find the slope of that. So let's say that's like a negative 3 fourths. Then I'm going to do something that's perpendicular to that, which would be 4 thirds. And from there, I would, now this is going to come from this angle. I would count up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 3. And I would draw, which is not exactly accurate, but I would draw my right angle. And then from the last one, I'd have to do the same thing. This time I'd have to find the slope and I'd count down this direction. So what would happen if I did it 100% accurately is you would see those three segments meet outside your triangle. So it depends on how you drew it, what was the obtuse side or obtuse angle, but at some point with a straight edge, with a protractor, or something that you could see the 90 degrees or with a graph, you should be able to draw that. Lewis. If you didn't have a protractor, like if you had a protractor and you could find the 90 degrees line, then you could use the 90 degrees. But if it's on a graph, you're going to use the slope. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you would from the vertex. From the opposite vertex. Oh, like where Right, like so if I find the slope of this side, then I want to count from this vertex. The one it's not including, right? This side, I would count from this vertex because it's got to connect that way. 
if I want to count, if I'm doing the slope on this side, then I'm going to count from this vertex because I want it to come down and hit that side. And then the, the last one is on the other side, right? Okay. Pardon the interruption. Nicholas Soto, issue for the students. The test is Monday? Test. Five, five. All right, five, five is called using inequalities in a triangle. So we're going to learn some stuff about inside a triangle. Good news is the special stuff is gone, like the special names and points of concurrency and all that stuff, gone. Okay, there's some theorems you're going to apply to a triangle. So this theorem 510 says if one side of a triangle is longer than another, then the angle opposite the longer side is larger than the angle opposite the shorter side. So this is where hopefully some common sense makes this easier. Because if I take two points and I spread them out further apart than two initial points, the further apart those points go, the bigger the angle that makes those points, right? So if I look at this side, this is 10, and I look at this side, this is 12, the angle that is used to make 12 is going to be bigger than the angle used to make 10. So whatever's opposite the longer side is the bigger angle. Whatever's opposite the shorter side is the smaller angle. So in this case, I don't know how, what the sides of those angles are, but I do that, know that the measure of angle C is bigger than the measure of angle B because the side opposite C is bigger than the side opposite B. Nope. Uh, if you're like trying to literally prove that one angle is bigger than the other angle, right. then you could use that. Yeah. Camilla. So the measure of angle C is bigger because... Because C is opposite 12, which is bigger than 10. Okay. The angle opposite the biggest side is the bigger angle. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? That yeah. Sense. Now we're talking about the angles. So if one angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, the side opposite the larger angle is longer than the side opposite the smaller angle. So same point, okay, but now we're talking about the reverse. So in this case, they give you angle A and angle C because angle C is bigger than angle A, the side opposite angle C, which is AB, is bigger than the side opposite A, which is CB. Good? Easy, right? Makes sense. The bigger the angle, like if you literally took your hands and you held your, your wrists together, the wider you spread your hands apart, the bigger the angle, if you could picture a string connecting your middle fingers together, the longer that string has to be, right? Bigger the angle, longer the side. Okay, this one has a name. It's called the Triangle Inequality Theorem. And it says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a third triangle, of a third, of a triangle, sorry, is greater than the length of the third side. The sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So if I add B, C, and A, C, it has to be greater than A, B. If I add A, B, and A, C, it has to be greater than C, B. And if I add A, B, and B, C, it has to be greater than A, C. Good. The sum of any two sides has to be greater than the length of the third side. Is the order of the letters? No. Okay. Nope. So I could call that A, B, or B, A. It doesn't matter. Right? Same segment. Good question. Still good, right? Easy stuff. All right. So name the largest angle and the smallest angle. What's the largest? Angle C. What's the smallest? Angle B. Name the longest and the shortest side. What's the long? Well, actually, what do you have to do first? Find the last. Find that missing angle. Because we know 105 is going to be the biggest. There can only be one obtuse, right? So longest is easy. Longest would be IT. But shortest, in order to do that, I have to know what angle T is first. So 105 plus 46 is 151. And 180 minus 151 is 29. So now what's the smallest 
or shortest side? IJ. IJ. Or JI, the order doesn't matter. Questions on that one? Longest would be opposite the largest angle. So 105 is the largest angle. Opposite, it would be IT or TI. You can call it either one. Example two says complete with less than, equal to, or greater than. Given ABC is a right triangle with the measure of angle C equal to 90. So give yourself a visual. We've got a right triangle. What? And C is the right angle. So I don't know if this is A or B. It doesn't matter if this is A or B. It doesn't matter. All I know is that C is the right angle. So what's the relationship between angle C and angle A? C has to be what? Bigger. Why? Because if it's 90, there can't be another one bigger than 90, right? So C has to be greater than A. Angle C has what relationship to A plus B? They're equal. Why is it equal? Oh, it has, to has to equal 90. Remember the, 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 the complementary, complementary angles on that right triangle, or the acute angles have to be complementary. And then what's the relationship between AC and AB? Good. AC is the biggest side, so this one must be less than. Questions on that one? Okay, the lengths of two sides of a triangle are 8 and 13. Then the length of the third side must be greater than blank but less than blank. So this is your triangle inequality theorem. That says that that third side has to be bigger than the sum, right? Or the sum has to be bigger than the third side. So 8 plus 13 has to be greater than whatever this side is, yes? But then 8 plus whatever this angle is has to be greater than 13, and whatever this side is plus 13 has to be greater than 8. So I could sit there and try to figure out the combinations of them, or I could give you a shortcut, which is that they have to be... I didn't record that slide. No, I did. So again, it's yes, no, yes, no, yes. This, because it's equal to and not greater than, it has to be greater than.